Okay, this is going to be a very short tutorial on building a real-time kind of random video chopper in Touch Designer using a little bit of Python and some other techniques. Uh, this is something I wanted to build for my own purposes and maybe it'll be useful to someone else. It's really simple as far as Touch Designer goes. That's the network. This is kind of the thing that it's going to do. This, this is a folder of videos basically that was generated by Sora, but hitting this beat button will change the video and it'll also jump to a random whoop it'll jump to a random point in each video as you click that as well so it's a little bit like Resolume's autopilot feature but it jump it can jump easily to a random point in the random video which is what I wanted to achieve and there's an auto mode you can click on here which gives each video a kind of timer how long it's going to go for and then at the end it should skip to something else unless like there where it changes the same number twice in a row let's see if it does it this time and click there it is so in each a video is on a bounce back mode so you get that kind of breathing effect here and there um, yeah but let's jump in and see if we can build it really quickly while not confusing anyone. We'll see how that goes. Folder. We're going to start by creating a folder, which is, of course, right there. And our folder is on the desktop there. Sora Floral. Let's select that one. There's the videos that we're going to be using. OK. Next step. A movie file in top is what we want. So tab and movie file in. Where are we? I can spell still. Here we go. Movie file. Okay, so we've got a banana. That's great. We're going to create a null here, which will help us with things later. And a window comp. That's just for our output. If we want to send it out to a video projector or something like that. Okay, so that's the basic part. This uh, folder also needs an info chop attached to it. So I'll just put that there and drag this one in. Operator. Okay, and that gives us something very important, which is the number of rows. We're going to use that in a little while. Okay, then down here I'm going to create a button. And I'll attach that button to another chop, just a null. Should do us. Rename that button to beat. It's the sort of thing we could trigger this button with a uh, on on the beat of music or something like that in future if we wanted to. Uh, now we're also going to add a chop execute, which is a very handy operator, and this is where we'll be putting our Python in. And I might actually just copy and paste uh, the whole. Python stuff from the other project and then kind of explain it. So I'll keep it all on the screen at the same time. Uh, what else do we need here? We need to drag that onto that. So this is going to trigger this one. And it's going to trigger it on the in the on to off region here. So let's just click down there and make sure you change this from value change to off to on. Did I say on to off before? I meant off to on. Okay, so what I'll do here actually is uh, actually first we need two text chops, comps, ops. Oh, it gets confusing in touch designer sometimes. Uh, two text, text, text. There, and another one here. Okay, we're going to tell these what to say in a little while. Um, but I'm going to copy and paste from our other project all the things we need here. So, and then I'll kind of explain to the best of my ability what we're actually doing with this stuff. Uh, so uh, first we've got this import random line. That's a random is the Python library that we're going to use to generate random numbers. And this is highlighted here, stop movie playing. So movie file in, which remember is this one here. First thing that's going to happen is we're going to stop it playing by changing the cue to on. 
and that's what this little code here will do. Uh, then we've got number of rows, which it's getting from the table itself. Actually, not the table, but the info chop attached to the table. So that's this figure here. We got the number of rows, and because there's a zero there with the name on it on the row, uh, we t minus one off that. So that gives us 12, which is how many files we've got in the folder. We cre create the random integer here, and then address the, oh, what are we doing there? We're calling the file name. We're saying which folder, which file to get from the folder here. So the file name is on the movie file input, so it's actually going to change this part here. Let's see if that works. Actually, what happens when I press beat right now? Yeah, there we go. So it's finding the right files. And also you can see down here it's changing the cue point as I click that on and off to. This actually should be on momentary. So it goes on and off for a single click. There we go. Okay, and you can see this is giving us uh, the show number and play new file. It's giving us the number of the um, row number of the folder. So that's the row number that's getting. So number three is this row here, floral loop three. That should be what we're looking at. Okay. And here it's getting a random cue point as well. I think I'll leave this project uh, in the YouTube, as on the YouTube page as well, so you can just download that if you need to. But otherwise, the text is pretty simple to come up with, and there might be better ways of doing this as well. Anyway, so we've kind of already done it just with that. What we haven't got yet is the automatic play button, which will click this beat button all by itself at kind of randomly timed intervals that's what i was going for so the idea is being that you could have a, you could have a folder of 100 videos i guess and just kind of walk away from it and uh, hitting the auto button so let's make that auto button here it is we'll call that auto we'll make another null here just to give us something to do and actually I'm going to copy the whole whole darn thing there and drag that in to be the operator so in here we've uh, we're referencing a timer yet which I haven't added but I'm going to do now that is another chop so timer let's go there's our timer one so now when we click this auto button it's going to start the timer which is this one here, it's just starting it with a pulse. And if we click it off in the off on to off section, we're going to initialize again, which basically means stop and reset all the other channels. Okay, now we've got one other very important uh, thing to do here. Oh, yes, yes. So this one here, we're going to add one output here which is the cycles pulse. Is that what we want? Yeah, I think so. Cycles pulse. And then we're going to go out of this one, click select here. And this gives us the ability to just select one of the channels. In this case, it will be the cycles pulse. And under that, we're going to add another chop execute Drag that on there, so it's going to trigger all the time on every value change. So this is clicked as it is, which is exactly what we want. I'm just going to zoom in, go into edit mode there, make some room, and then we've got some other text to paste in here, which I'll do now. And Again, we're going to import the random library for, through Python, create a random number between 1 and 10. Then we're going to apply that random number to the length of the timer. So you can see in here, 
uh, in the timer itself, we've got a length parameter here, which is the one that's going to change. So each time uh, the timer gets to the end here, it's going to create a new one of these. Oh, but hang on a second. Rename. Oh, I've renamed here. That should actually be not renamed, but just the channel cycle pulse. So we only end up with one channel. That's the idea here. Otherwise, it's going to calculate all this stuff on every frame, which is not what we want. Okay, uh, and as you can see here, we've got we're initializing the timer again before we do anything, and then we're starting the timer again. I notice that it has to be initialized to get the new length. Uh, if you just let the timer run and cycle without doing that, uh, the length won't change. So very important to do that. And then at the end of this set, it's going to click button one, which was our original beat button, still called button one. So it's going to click that at the end of every cycle also. And then text three, which we haven't created yet, it just as a handy thing to have, we're going to be able to see uh, the length that it's giving us from that random number in here. So that should be already pointing to the right place. So let's just see if this is working. This is pretty much the whole system already. So it's working in manual mode. We can see that much. And if I click auto, we've got a Oh, something's not working already. Oh, let's see what happens when we get to the end, though. Boom. Okay, that did something. Okay, just had to reset that first one. Ah, one thing on the movie file, this is kind of important, on the movie file input and the playback, what you want to do is go to the trim tab, put trim on, and go mirror. And as long as you've got a format that works, I use Photo JPEG, uh, QuickTime normally, that will create a bounce back kind of looping effect on your video. Uh, so it's not going to click, click over when it gets to the next um, loop of the same video. It's kind of, it kind of just makes things a little smoother. The other thing I do, I've been doing a little bit, because sometimes there's a little bit of black at the end of my videos, I just pull this trim back to around... 0.94 and that should help with any black strangeness that comes in between these files. Let's see what's going on. Seems to be working. Anyway, that's an automatic player and you can change that original folder to something else and it should just play all the videos in the folder. Create random numbers and um, you can just walk away from the computer after that and it's done. Anyway, I hope that worked. I haven't done a tutorial before like this, so um, yeah, thanks for watching.